Seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time. I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change Been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same Well good morning, welcome back to Bramble Tie you probably just see me uh, sweeping the driveway. This is the driveway, the entrance uh, to Bramble Tie. And uh, it's important to keep those leaves clear. Uh, now the colder weather's coming in, autumn's upon us, and the leaves are falling down and dropping into the curbside. So just keep that clear. Uh, the reason we're here is just to show you a little bit more of Bramble Tie. A couple of people have said, you know, you don't show us that much, and, um, but yet you show us so much. So I kind of agree with that. We're still a young channel. Um, we're moving on and thinking of the ways that we can introduce some of the work that we've already done uh, pre the YouTube channel. Uh, so this was some work that we did a couple of years ago, uh, which I'm standing beside. So we're at the entrance where the gates will be. Uh, funny story too, um, getting the planning permission. Everything in Italy needs planning permission, uh, even if people will tell you a little bit different. And... Um, Originally, we didn't really have a drive into the house. We had to go to the province, uh, which is in um, part of Chieti, which is the office in Pescara, uh, to understand what permissions had been given for the entrance that was already there. Uh, a smaller entrance, just allowing a little tractor in. The, the road behind me is a provincial road, which means it's part of the state or the region, not part of the commune. Um, it's a good thing because it, uh, it gets looked after very, very well. Uh, it was made about 10 years ago and it obviously drove a line um, which connected some villages together. Uh, it's not widely used. There's not a lot of traffic on this road uh, for the size of the road that it is. Um, but it works very well for us. I'm going to take you off the camera in a second and just show you the, what we had to do. Um, we have got the gates um, for Bramble Tie. They were purchased from a country estate in the UK, surprisingly enough, uh, all 800 kilos of them. Uh, they're ready for refurb, they're in perfect condition, and also luckily managed to pick up on eBay uh, the electric motors. Uh, so they're the frog motors and all the bits that go with them. Just got to pick up the computer parts, um, but apparently uh, mech mechanically I've checked everything out and the arms work perfectly okay, the mo motors work perfectly okay. It's not essential, it's not the most important part of Bramble Tie, but it's parts of Bramble Tie that we need to think of. Uh, new motors, or frog motors, which they're called, um, they sit under the ground, and you're talking about a thousand uh, pounds for, for each motor. Um, we managed to pick up the motors for 50 pounds each, and when I was back in the UK, I bought them back um, in the car when I was driving back, as we do quite regularly. Anyway, like, I'm going to take you off of the, uh, the tripod and just discuss. I'll be putting some photographs. I uh, don't think I've got any videos of when we did uh, the important part of the driveway. So uh, let's get on. OK, I know what you're saying. That's just a strip of concrete. Uh, to me, it's more than a strip of concrete. So this piece of curbstone, if I walk round, um, if anybody's wondering what the red and white pole is, that's obligatory in Italy for the snow. Um, but guess what, I'm the only one that's got them in this road. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is the extra piece of curbstone, so I mowed the, made the profile. They allow you to do that. Inside there, there's uh, box reinforced steel, and that carries on the profile all the way up the road. You can see all the leaves I've been sweeping. Now, the attention what I want to show you is, let's take our attention onto this piece here. So this is the important part. So is it, this is the threshold to the property. That's where I cut in. So we're now six metres and a half wide, which gets in 
whatever we need to get on uh, or into bramble tie. So it's this piece of concrete here we're going to concentrate on. And I'm going to start putting in some photographs. That piece of concrete is 14 inches thick. It's two layers, uh, reinforced uh, steel on the base and reinforced steel on the top of the concrete. And that is going nowhere. We've got a nice straight edge across the top. I know there's some grass growing, but this was the first part and we had to do this. But this is a storm channel. So a lot of you might say, why haven't you got a water grill um, uh, somewhere around about here? Basically because we don't need one. Um, this is a water channel. The way they design the road here is that the water travels down this road on the concrete edge. So on this edge, not on the road. It, all, all the water falls into this channel. This channel can't be too deep because obviously we've got to get the car and we've got to get other vehicles over it. But this side was only grass. So you can imagine you were driving from there, across there, and digging a hole in the grass with your tires. So that was unsatisfactory. And in the event, all of this needs planning um, anyway, approval. And we've got that for this part. Uh, which took some doing because they didn't really understand why we wanted planning approval for the entrance. Uh, but in, uh, in, the, in the province of Pescara, we have to pay for this. So we have to pay an annual rate because technically it's part of the road. And obviously we're moving part of the curbstone. It's not that much, but however, when we went to uh, visit uh, Pescara and talk to the provincial people that uh, take care of these, they said, ah, it's never been paid for. And I said, well, our work has only been done recently and they said no no no, it's never been paid for the opening and the entrance has never been paid for which was only the width of a tractor somewhere up here just about six feet eight feet wide just to get enough a tractor in anyway they came back with a load of bills over the years i don't know where they were holding them and i don't know how they costed them to this property particularly because there was no address um, so that's kind of strange so anyway we were presented with a bill of many hundreds of euros which I refuse to pay. Um, it is what it is in Italy. You've got to get used to it. You've got to accept that the hidden is going to come and slap you in the face when you buy a property. I accept it, move on, and I negotiate everything with the people that are in charge. So don't go asking your neighbour, what can I do, blah, blah. You probably get the wrong information. I simply put my case forward to them saying I wasn't prepared to pay a bill that was outstanding for somebody who owned the property before us. They kind of understood that and uh, we came to uh, negotiate a price which was I thought was fair and reasonable. We still had to pay part of the, the back payments but nowhere near the hundreds of euros that they were asking for and uh, we did have to prove uh, the fact that we hadn't owned the house in the period before of this time. Let me take you closer towards the, the gates. So here we have um, what is the entrance here is that, uh, oh, just going to show you Monty. Hello, Monty. i going to say something for the camera. So Monty's doing well. She, or he, I always call her a she, I don't know why, but uh, she's very, he is very vocal. Uh, is getting on very, very well with Button. And uh, it's twice the size it was three weeks ago. I think it's some of the food it's been getting. It's very happy. Uh, super chatty, aren't you? Look, look how you can talk. What are you saying? If you only knew what they were saying. We've got drawings uh, for the gate assemblies. We've got drawing for the uh, for the under um, earth um, works, the plans, if you like, the concrete plans. Uh, the gates are, as I said, 800 kilos, which means we're going to have to dig down um, and put down some metre square blocks down there. Um, but they're also going to have to house um, the electrics and, and water drainage and stuff like that. Now, what you can see between the concrete I've just shown you and the gate post is six metres. And the reason why we've done that is because they changed the law in uh, the commune of Rapino. Now we return to the commune of Rapino for the local bylaws. And uh, normally we only had to have the gate a metre in from the curbstone. Um, but they changed the law uh, two years ago and we have to have it three metres. So three metres was going to take us to about here. Well, anywho, um, it gave me an idea, actually. This is a main road. This is how busy it gets during the day. This is it. A traffic jam is about three cars up here. Anyway, it gave me an idea that we could actually use uh, this entrance as 
a place where when you drive off the road and you drive up here what it will mean is the back end of your car is not sitting on the road when you're trying to get through the gate so in fact I've bought the gates six meters in and that takes care of the van as well so that's quite nice so it's about uh, seven and a half meters up to that white road line so we will inside this white line here so that's the road line okay these posts here I think I've already alluded to them but they are for snow they've got to be one meter tall they've got to be red and white striped but like I said we're the only property with them so that's a bit confusing but that's Italy for you you've just got to get used to it that's all it is we're standing outside the the new entrance that will lead onto the terrace which is actually in front of me and obviously we've got loads of soil and rocks to move before we get that terrace uh, moving along I've finished the stones inside so we're going to reveal those at the end of this program it's been a lot of work um, more than 1500 hours of my work over the past 10 months which is a lot a lot of people are saying why don't you get some help um, it's not that easy in Italy if we get some help um, in terms of employment uh, then we got to go through all sorts of uh, regulations and documentation which I don't really want to do uh, I've been quite happy to do this and um, and obviously what we can do is reveal uh, the finished product at the end of this vlog it's come out fabulous it's come out exactly what we want uh, we were restricted by the planning as to what size opening we could have what height it could be and the kind of shape it could be on the side of this wall that's a very strange thing because um, it's got to be in keeping but it's not a listed building hmm strange but because we've got a square entrance upstairs we had to have a square entrance downstairs and obviously we're going to end the video on revealing the inside stones they've come on fantastic um, I know I say so myself but I've put the hours in uh, each stone has taken from start to finish about six hours each uh, to get them, shape them, or find them in the first place, shape them, and then get them into the to the right angle. We wanted an um, obtuse angle so that when you open the doors, obviously the door handles of the doors don't catch on your clothing as you walk out of the property. So the angles of the stones are not straight. They go like that inside if you understand anything I'm talking about but I'm sure you do but you'll get the idea because I'm going to show you and uh, that's been super important that's worked out really well uh, we've been munching or thinking about the the beam across the top of the internal stones and our senses of opinion and the opinion that pe people we trust and that have come here and had a look said don't do anything just plaster it all the way down and round keep it simple because it's going to be plastered and rendered on that wall anyway and obviously we don't want to jazz it up too much this is a farmhouse um, we're trying to be sympathetic keep it authentic but remember the downstairs has never been lived in it was only ever lived in by donkeys and uh, when we get our donkey um, it won't be able to live in there because it'll be lived in by us um, so we're looking forward to that I know Lynn is uh, chomping at the bit to get in the house but we've got a lot to do I'm going to show you a few of those bits because in the up and coming programs uh, we might need some help and uh, this is building in Italy for you um, if you're thinking about it in the future uh, do your due diligence which means do your research make sure you understand what you're getting into we do we did and we're still coming through costs that we didn't know we would get um, we look at it as a positive um, that's hard to do uh, we look at it as though uh, we, it is what it is we've got to move forward we are going to finish the property people ask us when are you going to finish the property um, I mean I can give I can give variable answers um, but in Italy you've got to be patient um, it's not when uh, it's moving forward next job each step every day keep going at it keep going at it take a couple of breaks and look back uh, work closely with the um, the planning and the architects and the project uh, managers in Pescara they're there for help uh, difficult to get and see the architect is fabulous our um, architect is Mario called Mario he's in the village he's full English speaking and in that re respect he helps very much and he did work for the commune um, which makes him a main feature in R Rapino as far as architects go 
Okay, so before we reveal the inside stones, the completed stones that we've uh, been doing over the last few weeks, um, I want to show you a small compilation of the work. We've shown you one side and we're going to show you the right hand side now as you look from on the inside of the room and uh, show you exactly how I did that. Um, I've got it down to seven minutes. It is fast forwarded, but it's only double the speed, um, not four times. So that you can still see what's going on. And uh, it represents about four or five days of work. And it's just not possible to show everything. I've shown what I consider to be the important parts of uh, the walled rebuild. And um, hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next, is show you that video.